Welcome back after quite a long break. Exams are over for me and so Animal of the Week has returned. In this episode we will take a look at a piece of seaweed. More specifically, this piece of seaweed that's actually not a piece of seaweed. It's called the Leafy Sea Dragon and though it may be similar, it's not a seahorse. It is a type of sea dragon and it's so well camouflaged that if you were to pass it in the water, you probably wouldn't give it a second thought. Leafy sea dragons are found down under down under, and by that I mean they are found on the southern coast of Australia in the more temperate waters around Perth, Adelaide and Melbourne. They prefer to live in shallow water around 3 to 50 metres in depth, and are most commonly found in rocky seaweed filled reefs where they can easily camouflage themselves. The diet of these creatures is more or less what you would expect, plankton, small crustaceans and even recently hatched fish that are still larvae. However, the method in which they feed is quite extraordinary. Seahorses have no teeth or stomach, and neither does the leafy sea dragon, so just like them, it has to eat almost constantly to survive, as food goes through its digestive system too fast. To eat prey, it uses a pipette-like system, as it has no teeth to catch food with. They expand a small cavity in their snouts that creates suction and pulls in their prey, which is then swallowed whole. A pretty unusual but certainly amazing way of eating. Now. Seahorses are quite renowned for it being the fathers that brood the eggs, and again the leafy sea dragon is no different. Unlike seahorses however, the eggs are deposited by the female underneath the male's tail, instead of a pouch in the abdominal region that seahorses use. The male fertilises the eggs, around 300 of them, and carries them around for 6-8 to eight weeks. The eggs are attached to the male by the sea dragon's skin that hardens around them and gives them a supply of oxygen. When hatching begins, the process can take up to two days, in which time the male will help remove the eggs by scratching them on rocks and shaking his tail. Let's start with the glaring obvious one, or to most predators, the not very obvious one, it's camouflage. The long leafy flaps of skin it possesses make it look exactly like a piece of seaweed, great for living in the ocean. They swim so gracefully that they are able to maintain their appearance of just some seaweed even when moving. The long leafy flaps are not used for swimming as they are too large and soft, Instead they use two small fins that are almost completely transparent to propel themselves, but probably the best part of the whole look is their ability to change colour to fit with the environment. Another adaptation they possess is their swim bladders. These are also found in all seahorses and most bony fish. They are bladders that are filled with gas that allow for the seahorse to control its buoyancy and allow it to stabilise itself in the water. Luckily leafy sea dragons are only classed as least concern, however like all species they still face threats. It isn't known what they are preyed upon by, but we can assume that they are hunted by something, or were in the past, by the level they go to to camouflage themselves. Humans, however, are known to hunt them. Divers have been known in the past to capture these sea dragons, to keep them as pets, or to be used in alternative medicine. Due to this, causing a sharp decrease in the numbers, the Australian government put a complete protection on them, banning all capturing of the species, and made it a requirement that any new developments have to consider their impact on the species. Pollution also threatens them, as it does all marine wildlife, and climate change also does, due to the increased extreme weather events such as storms that cause the sea dragons to get washed up upon the shore. Leafy sea dragons suffer more in these events than seahorses do, as they do not possess the ability to curl their tails around seaweed to keep them in place. Overall the species does seem to be doing quite well, and the steps taken by the Australian government to protect them will hopefully mean they'll be around for a long time. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.